What's up, everyone? My name's AJ Writes Crypto, and it is the end of April. I got my glasses on. I have just looked at charts for probably three hours, and it's the end of April, right? And that means we're entering May. And we all know the famous statement, sell in May, walk away. Will history repeat itself? Bitcoin, my alarm just went off on my phone. Bitcoin is now in the 50s. It is now in the 59,000 range. We are going to look at a bunch of metrics. We're going to look at a bunch of altcoins. So put your glasses on, plug in. Let's get into this video. So first things first, let's look at this. All right. This is a really interesting website called BitcoinMonthlyReturn.com. It's a very good tool to kind of keep your eyes on, you know, the overall strides of Bitcoin over time. And, you know, it says right here, April is loading. April is loading. Well, once the monthly close happens, as of right now, we're down, you know, about 13, almost 14 percent. This will be the first red month for Bitcoin since August of last year. So we have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back to back to back green months in a row. And, you know, when the last time we did that was was back, uh, well, in 2020 going into 2021. Right here, October, November, December, all green in 2020, 2021. We had green, 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 followed by red, 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 followed by a wake up in July and August, and then the big run up in October, which was the top, the top of the 2021 bull run. So surprisingly, although the halving was this year, we are kind of following a little bit of the trend that we followed from 2020 going into 2021. Uh, and, you know, we are going to have a red April. So based off of that trend, we would also have a red May, not to mention the past three Mays have all been red. You also see back in 2019 and 2017, May was actually a really big month with plus 70 plus 60 percent right here. But those were also followed up by a bullish April. And that has not been the case, as we know that April is going to be a red month. And, you know, there's also a lot of other things I want you guys to keep your eye on in April this may all right we have a lot of big unlocks from a bunch of altcoins i'm going to go over really fast dydx will unlock 10 percent of its circulating supply meme land 8.3 percent of its supply aptos 2.6 percent starknet 8.8 percent arbitrum 3.5 uh immutable uh, imx 1.75 pyth this is a big one its supply will double on May 20th, its supply will double. It is around, uh, I think, 1.5 now. That thing is going to, yeah, here we go. Here, here it is on CoinGecko. Is that 1.5 now? It is going to actually a little bit more than double uh, this month. So keep a close eye on that. I mean, I like trading Pyth. It is a good coin to trade. I like that it's an oracle on the Solana ecosystem, but its economic situation is not the best. Keep an eye out on that. Also, Avalanche, 2.5% as well. So certainly some things to keep your eye on as we uh, get a little bit closer. Uh, you know, May, May is happening. All right. So the first thing I want to look at here, unfortunately, is the dollar. All right. The dollar with a green dot on the daily on Market Cipher B. Not really what I want to be seeing on the dollar as, you know, as we want to see the dollar lose strength. A weak dollar is a strong market. Uh, you know, that has always been the case. Even when we zoom in on the two hour, you can see that it broke out of this little descending channel and is now approaching this support resistance level. Just worth keeping an eye on the dollar as we uh, inch towards. Also, another thing I want you guys to keep your eye on as well is the stock market. All right, let's be honest. These are risk assets we're talking here. There is most certainly a connection, especially with the ETF money coming in. The institutional money in crypto has never been more relevant, and the connection between the stock market and crypto has never been more relevant. I always watch the dollar. I always watch the stock market because you need to know where the macro is to be able to accurately look at crypto. All right, and as you can see here, the stock market did bounce up off this support resistance level right here. We came up getting rejected by the 200 EMA, which is really not a good look. We are only looking at the one hour chart, but you know, this is really all of April is right here, getting rejected at the, the 200 EMA. And now it looks like maybe the stock market will come down and retest this level here. And you know, that really all does kind of add up to what we're building to here is looking at Bitcoin, okay? First of all, I have Bitcoin on the five day, 
right here right now to show you that we have a red X on market cipher A. All right. On a five day chart. That is pretty big. Pretty big deal to have a red X on a five day chart. The larger the time frame, the more important the indication from indicators like this. And market cipher has has been dead on the whole way down the street. If you want to learn more about market cipher, click the link down below in the description. By far my favorite indicator. So we got a red X on the five day. Not looking good. Let's zoom in here on the daily. As you can see, Bitcoin's actually right above 60,000 right now. It did dip into the 50s. It did dip into the 50s, but we are right at 60,000. So really the support resistance level that we have been watching has been this yellow line right here at 61,000 and some change here. We have lost that level. The local low is actually this little baby blue line right here. And that level is, you know, around 59.5 ish, 59.6 ish. All right. We lose that level. We're off to the races because there's really not much to catch us. If you look at the volume profile, there's a big old gap in the volume profile. There is a little bit of a catch around 58,000, but really the volume profile does not begin to wake up until the 52,400 range right there. The, really, the point of control is all the way down here at 43,000. We don't even want to talk about the point of control. All right. So, what so basically what I'm saying here is that there is a chance that if Bitcoin loses this level right here at 59.6 we could go down through the low volume node maybe have a quick stop at 58,000 uh hopefully we can put up a fight there because i would not like to see bitcoin go back to this little value area at 52,000 so keep all of that in your mind i will zoom in here on the two hour just to show you on bitcoin that it is you know kind of putting up a fight at the 60,000 level and let's hope that we can hold uh, you know, this $59,000 level, this blue line here, be sure to copy this chart, set alarms on your personal chart at home so you can keep up to date on the story. So, you know, let's let's pray for a reversal. Let's hope that this kind of prints a bullish divergence that Bitcoin can pop off of this. We, we don't we haven't lost it until we lost it. All right. It, the hope is not lost until the hope is lost. And, and once that happens, that's when we react to the market. So right now I'm not in a trade right now. I'm not in a trade right now. I am watching all of this closely to properly react to the market. And that's what you should do as well. That's what we've been doing over at my Telegram group all the time. If you want to learn more about my Telegram group, make sure you send me an email at ajalphagroup at gmail.com. We have been nailing trades just about every day in the group since it started a little bit over a month ago. We already have over 110 people in the group. Some people are beginners. Some people are experts. We really have something for everybody. If you want to get better at trading, you want to take your trading game to the next level, send me an email at ajalphagroup at gmail.com. All right, so let's do a quick little recap here. So May in the past three years has been a bearish month. All right. Um, I'm not really feeling that bullish about May right now. Also, the dollar is going up. The stock market is coming down to retest support resistance. Bitcoin is right on the edge of losing 60,000, which is not good. So what about the altcoins? What about the altcoins? So which altcoins should we target? What altcoins should we be looking at? So what I do, a lot of you know, I like to look at the gainers and the losers on crypt, on uh, CoinGecko to find that volatility, right? I'm always searching for that volatility. But another thing I do, a little trick, is I'll go to the exchange that I trade on which is Femex. If you want to sign up for Femex, make sure you click the link down below in the description. By far the best exchange in crypto. I go up here to the, the leverage trading and I'll look at this list right here that pops up and look at the volume. Okay. I want to trade coins that are volatile coins. I'm not going to be, you're not going to find me trading Ethereum or BNB or XRP. You're going to find me trading the coins that actually move if bitcoin moves two to three percent i wouldn't be in the coins that are moving you know 10 to 12 percent all right so and we also want to make sure we are in the coins that have enough volume especially if you're doing higher leverage trades so you can get in and out and as you can see right now we have solana we have sui sui arb arbitrum ena optimism and maybe even whiff these are the coins that i'm going to target because they have a lot of liquidity on the exchange i'm trading on all right let's start off with no other than solana as you can see here on the daily chart we have a 14 negative 5 on the dual band strength index where anything a 14 or above is a large is a high degree of certainty 
All right, so it looks like Solana is coming on down the hill here. We've lost a lot of these little notes on this chart are from the Telegram group itself. All levels we've lost, all trades that we've won. Okay, uh, this little blue line right here, we have just lost at 125. We are now at 122, and we are approaching this support resistance level right here on Solana at 118. Okay, coming down on the momentum oscillator, coming down on the RSI, coming down on the VWAP approaching a gap in the volume profile right here that would take us to you know uh you know 111 the point of control is actually at 99 dollars on solana on the daily let's investigate let's zoom into the two hour as you can see it is approaching it is approaching this level here at, at 118. uh so basically i would consider this a conditional range for solana where by conditional if we lose 118 we go short if we regain 125, we go long, okay? So set an alarm here, that is your long alarm. Set an alarm here at 118, that is your short alarm. It is that simple. It is that simple. Run a tight stop loss and maintain the trade accordingly. Here we are, SUI. Another very interesting two hour chart on SUI. Uh, the point of control is actually above the price action on this one. That actually makes me think maybe this thing will reverse. Maybe it will reverse because right here is like kind of the support resistance levels from back here a uh, little. And so we're right above the support resistance level at 106 and the point of no return would be $1 at that part because then we would lose this volume profile. It would gap down here and we would have a target of 82 cents. So in the event SUI loses a dollar, I think 82 cents would be in the cards, which would be from the $1 loss to that. Uh, 82 cents would be about a 19% short. That's what I would be looking at in the event SUI loses that $1 level. In the event it bounces, it, my target would be, you know, this uh, support resistance line at 145. So, you know, how do you determine if something is going to bounce or if something is going to lose the level? Well, first of all, it has not lost the level yet. Another trick of the trade I like to do is I watch the 12 minute chart don't ask why it works when the person that told me about the 12 minute chart when i asked him why he said don't ask questions it just works and what he does and what i do is if you even look at it back here's a great example so anytime the price action is trading below the 50 ema all right that's bearish continuation bearish continuation you see that but when it bounces anytime the price can get above and close above the 12 minute on the 50 EMA, if you went long from the close of this candle to here over the next day and nine hours, you would have made 7.7% on that long. So if you if this thing turns around, say this alarm at 106 doesn't go off. This alarm doesn't go off. We don't go into that short unless that alarm goes off. But the price bounces and gets above and closes above on the 12 minute above the 50 EMA you could have there is a long trade idea there and it worked out perfectly right there okay so keep that in mind and there was also a bull cross there as well because the conditions were a little bit different but you know that is a trick that I've used over time I've won so many trades over time just with a close above the 12 the 50 EMA on the 12 minute it's a really good trick and that's how I've been able to catch some bounces and as always run a tight stop loss ENA. This is a coin I am not that familiar with. I know that it just launched in the beginning of this month, but it does have a lot of uh, liquidity on Femex. So I'm going to target this for coins. And I would say right now that this thing is in a conditional range. This right here would be a conditional range. Okay. Oh, and there we go. So between right here, 93.8, about 94 cents to here, which is about 75 cents this would be we break this we go long we lose this we go short but let's investigate a little bit right this thing actually started started go, went live earlier this month at the beginning of this month and it started trading at 64 cents all right this is relevant this is relevant because this really this chart doesn't have much to go off of it doesn't have much past price action to go off of so in the event where we lose this level at you know around uh 76 cents I think that 64 cent level from there would probably be my target uh, as that's where it started trading, which would be about a 16% drop. So keep a close eye on this one. Make sure you have an alarm set for the top of the conditional range around 94 cents, 93.6, and the bottom of the conditional range at 76.6 uh, 
uh, it is ranging in there right now. Also, um, with Athena, keep a close eye on this one if you want to long-term hold it. I don't really know if long-term holding ENA is the move. It is inside the top 100, but look at the supply situation here. Uh, circulating supply, 1.425 billion out of a 15 billion total supply. Uh, if you come over here and look at its tokenomics, as you can see, you know, oh, let me scroll this back down. As you can see, we are in, oh man, why is this thing fighting me? <laughs> okay, so right now we are, uh, you know, we're in Q2 of 2024. Here we are right here. This thing has just got moving. By Q1, Q2 of 2025, this thing's going to go from, you know, the 1.4 billion where it is now, uh, you know, to around 4 to 5 billion uh, this time next year. This thing is going to move quick. We do have a little bit, you know, it doesn't cross to 3 billion into the end of this year. So we do have a little bit of time with this coin before it really, the supply really starts to jump on us. But I just want you to be aware, excuse me, of the supply situation with ENA. All right. I'm going to move down here to Arbitrum on the daily. Got a 20, negative 5 on the dual band strength index. Coming down on the oscillator, coming down in the money flow. Uh, you know, this thing is, it's in a down, a, excuse me, a descending pattern here. It's really not looking bullish here on the daily for Arbitrum. Uh, you know, on the two hour here, it is putting up a fight. We do want to point out that, you know, this right here was the, the, the candle close. We are staying above that. And this right here is where it wicked down to. So the loss of either of these two levels would probably be a pretty big short. If you want, if it bounces back up, the trick to catch it when it bounces back up is a candle close on the 12 minute chart above the 50 EMA. That is, that is how I would scalp long. That is for a scalp trade, by the way. That's how I would scalp long Arbitrum. But make sure you have your alarm set on this level, 95.4, and on this level, 84.4. Uh, what was the decimal there? 84.4. Okay, the loss of this level, I, I would maybe short to that level. And that would be about, maybe about, you know, about 11, 11 and a half percent trade right there. So there you go. Um, I do want to take a quick look at WIF here. This was one of the ones with a lot of liquidity on Femex. Uh, you know, let's start off with the daily. Not looking the best. It has just been coming down, down, down since the top. I know there's that big support resistance level at 316. Uh, but since then, the price action have, has opened up a can of Stone Cold Steve Austin whoop ass on anyone who was hodling this chart for a little bit too long. You did get caught. You did get in trouble if you just held this thing down the hill, trading well below the 50 EMA. Uh, but, you know, the, the, but the idea... A lot of people are still kind of holding on to the idea that you know Bitcoin has not lost that level yet. We could bounce from here. And when I look at a lot of the altcoins, you know, I do kind of see the argument because the point in control is above the price action. Okay. And it is kind of kind of trying to turn around here on market cipher B. And it looks like it's going to put up a fight. So really with WIF, you want to have this alarm here set at 229. We lose that level, we go short. If you want to catch the bounce. When we catch the scalp bounce, 12 minute chart, get above the 50 EMA. There is your idea for that. All right. And last but certainly not least, optimism. Good old fashioned gone fan. On the daily chart, we have a blood diamond with a red X on market cipher A. We have a 22 negative five on the dual band strength index, very bearish. And a red dot on market cipher B as well on the daily. As you can see, it has lost the 1121 one, level. We have lost the 2131 level and we are fighting to stay in this range in the gun fan. I would say if you pulled this gun fan out and we lost, you know, this, if we lost this level here, it would be very likely that we come down to the bottom of the next level of the gun fan, which would be around 150, 160, where right now we are at $2.30, which would be about a 30% drop for optimism. So let's hope this thing can maintain. You know, we do want to go off support resistance. We kind of want to see in the past, see right here, how it has held this level over here. All right. And we have held it before. This alarm level would be at $2.02, 201, 202. We do not want to see optimism fall below that. Uh, if in the event it does, I would short to the point of control would be my big target would be a 31% target. Another volume of uh, Node level would be a dollar seventy-two, which would be a fifteen percent drop.
from here, investigating a little bit more on the two hour. Uh, you know, you, we do kind of see, let me get rid of this so I can see a little bit better. But, you know, you can see that it has put up a big fight down here before. It's not like we haven't been down to these levels uh, from, you know, March, April. We've been here before. OK, and we've bounced from here before. So I'm not saying it's over. I'm not saying it's the end of the world. There is the idea that we can come down here and go up. But right here, right now on optimism, we also bounced from here before. OK, and that level is at 224. If we lose 224. We could probably get a short down here to uh, about a 9.8% short to that 202 level. Uh, I And like I said with the other coins, I would not really feel comfortable going long on this unless it was a scalp long where we can get a close above the 50 EMA, which would be this red line right here. So there you go. There are all the alts I am looking at right now. I am going to post five more chart setups, five more chart setups over on the Telegram group. I'm going to edit this video. I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to put those positions over at my Telegram group. If you want to learn more of the setups I'm looking at, you want to learn more about my trading strategy that has been tried and true, proven over the past couple of years, send me an email, ajalphagroup at gmail.com. We have been knocking them out of the park. It makes me so happy to get those positive DMs from the traders in the group. AJ, thank you so much. I can pay my car off now. AJ, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I can pay for my kid to go to a private school. It, it, it's insane. It's literally insane, you know, the difference we've been making one day at a time. And this is what happens when you focus. This is what happens when you study and you really put your mind to changing this. If, if, you, if you just kind of passively watch these YouTube videos, you passively do these things, you're not really going to make a difference. This group is just just a much just as much about learning how to learn as it is about trading crypto. And that is one thing I am very good at is absorbing information like a sponge, the ability to turn the radio station off in your mind and to focus on the task at hand. So make sure you send me an email if you want to learn more about the group. Big shout out to all my sponsors, to Femax, the Market Cipher, Crypto Chips. And I'm so grateful to be here. So grateful to, to contribute to the space. You guys are absolutely amazing. Make sure you smash the like button down below if you haven't already. Let me know down in the comments what coins you're leverage trading. I want to look at the charts. With all that being said, my name is AJ Rage Crypto. Have yourself a safe rest of your day. Get rich or get wrecked. Talk to you.